Hey Nerdy Knitters, Tanya here. It's the end of another month and that means another monthly knitting roundup. So get a drink and you're knitting and let's settle in for a good chat. So let's get to our announcements and our books before we get to the knitting. So first of all, announcements, just one this month. And that is that after this podcast episode, I'm going to be taking a break from recording until the end of August. I'll be back with the August monthly roundup the last Friday of the month, but there won't be any videos between now and then. I just want to take a little break in the summer. I'll be working on other things behind the scenes, lots of great things coming up in the fall and the winter, and I'm planning ahead and getting those things started now. But uh, just taking a little break just from recording videos and sending emails and social media and all of that stuff just to hang out with my family and do some knitting, play some games. I got a little book nook. I don't know if you've ever seen those. They're like little miniature sets that you can put together and put on your bookshelf. So I got one of those to play around with over break. I got a punch needle set. So I'm going to give that a try maybe or I might save that for later on. We'll see. But just so you know, there won't be any videos and this is a good time to take a break because like I look at, I do pay attention to like my YouTube analytics and the views and stuff and they all tend to sort of drop in the summer, which is understandable. Everybody's busy with holiday things and family things and vacations. So it's understandable. So I figure that's a good time for me to take a break from posting as well. So books, we are going to get to our knitting book, but I do want to recommend, I love to read. Um, I probably read maybe a book a week at least, and I read every evening and sometimes um, on the weekends, I will, especially when it's nice right now, I will take my book and my iced coffee and just go sit under the umbrella in my backyard. So I wanted to mention one that I have been enjoying right now. This is Miss Lattimore's Letter by Susan Allain or Allen. I'm not sure. I'll have it linked down below. This is a third book of hers that I've read. Now, if you like sort of Regency era, Jane Austen-esque style books, I mean, these are not Jane Austen, obviously, but it's sort of set in the same time period. Um, sort of like you can see that this author was definitely inspired by Jane Austen. So she has this book, Miss Lattimore's Letter. There is Mr. Malcolm's List. There's a third. The name is escaping me right now. And um, I've read them all, really enjoyed them. They're just sweet, lighthearted, nothing racy or anything like that. So if you just like sort of historical period romances um, without any racy bits, then you probably want to give these a try. They're nice, light summer reading, and I am really enjoying it. This is the third book of hers, and I'm almost finished, and I just started it two days ago, and I've only been just reading in the evenings, so um, popping right through this one. But just sweet little story, so if you need something new to read this summer, then I would look for these, and I didn't purchase them. I just get them from my local library, and um, just nice little romance novels. But now let's get to our knitting book. So our book this month is Knitting in the Old Way by Priscilla A. Gibson Roberts and Deborah Robson. So this, you probably aren't going to find it brand new in many places anymore. It was uh, released in the updated version in 2004, but you'll find it in plenty of used bookstore places online. I think I got mine from eBay. And I'm starting a collection. I've got some new knitting history books, not new, old. I've been buying like from eBay and A Books in different places and sweater construction and I want to start a series on like historical sweaters, but by geographical location. And I'm going to start with color work sweaters because I like color work. So I don't have any plans quite yet, but it's on my mind once I get a few other projects sort of off my needles and some things settle down because I've got a lot going on. Um, I do want to start a historical knitting series more for my own benefit, just to understand the history of sweaters. Um, but I was inspired by Roxanne Richardson. Like I've watched uh, quite often a lot of her Casual Fridays and she talks about she's done um, sweaters through the decades, like a sweater for each, you know, 10 years and looking at the history of knitting patterns. But I, I've, I was inspired by that, but I'm more inspired by like the geography of sweaters and why they are knit the way they are depending on where the people live. So... I'm going to start exploring some of that by knitting some sweaters and then maybe we'll go move on to like textured sweaters but I want to start with color work sweaters first. Probably the first one I've already got in my mind to do is um, an Icelandic sweater like a lopi sweater using Icelandic yarn and their knitting methods they're knit from the bottom up in like the sleeves and the body knit separate and then joined all together and the yoke is done with all the color work. 
uh, using like Icelandic yarn and learning more about the history and culture of Icelandic knitting. So to start it off, I feel like that one is not so like, um, that one is probably more accessible <laughs> for me to get started. And then I can just go deeper from there. And um, I don't really have any plans, like how many sweaters per year to, to work on, but I am buying some books to help guide my research. And this is one that I bought. Uh, not that I'm gonna use the patterns in here, but they do have like a lot of like the different, different information on different like uh, geographical locations and their knitting styles. So that's why I got this, but this is a really good resource if you like to knit sweaters and you've maybe perhaps tried Elizabeth Zimmerman's percentage system where you take your gauge swatch and use that information to figure out all of the numbers that you need, the stitch counts and the row counts at various points. And then you just need sort of a basic schematic to guide you through the process. This is not for somebody who needs like every step written out for them to follow. This is for somebody pretty adventurous who wants to use their swatch and then have sort of a basic template that they can follow and that gives them like rough guidelines for percentages like you know how much of the full circumference do you use for the sleeve or the neckline like that can all be worked out um, and this book has I think 15 different plans for different styles of sweaters all using that percentage system so let's go to the overhead and take a look at this book and you're going to find lots of sweater patterns here now this really breaks it down historically and the first part is an introduction talking about knitting methods, techniques, planning your sweater, yarns, things like that. And then it goes into all of the different shapes, starting with like sort of the earliest of the types of sweaters that you'll find. And they're all broken down into what they call plans here. And it uses a percentage system. Uh, if you're familiar with Elizabeth Zimmerman, she used the percentage system for some of her sweaters as well, where you would take your gauge, 100% would be like your stitch count for the circumference that you want, and then your percentage is based on the rest of the, the sweater would be based on that. And there's also some color work here as well, and intarsia, all of the different sort of historical and geographical types of color work sweaters, color stranding. And then we have a section on texture as well. There's a ton of information in here. Uh, Denmark, Great Britain, the Netherlands, Ireland, etc. All of the different types of textured sweaters that you would find. And then some more down here as well. And I like this section in the front. It tells you how to use the book because you're going to make your gauge swatch and then use that to figure out how to knit the sweater you want. Like there are not patterns in here, but there are plans. So if we get to... Like this one shows you how the diagram is going to work. It's going to have some symbols and it's just a picture of the sweater with those symbols and some notations there. It's not going to tell you exactly how to do everything. It's based on your gauge measurements. So here's an example of one. This is plan 11, a sweater with raglan sleeves. So this is your diagram and it does have a few notes down here, but you're basically going to have your gauge swatch and there's 100%, so whatever the circumference you want of the sweater, multiplied by your one inch stitch gauge, that'll give you your stitch count for 100%, and then you use that information for the rest. So the neckline would be like 40 to 45%, the hem at the bottom, 80 to 90%, 8% for the underarm, 35% for the sleeve. So everything is broken down like that. So you create the pattern, for your specific sweater based on these numbers and all of these different plans. There's 15 plans for 15 different sweaters in here. And then you just use that as your jumping off point. You add your stitch patterns, your color, whatever else you like to it. So after these plans, we have those sections on color work and things like that. So here is like a Fair Isle sweater. Everything's in black and white, lots of images and stuff, but all black and white and how they take that one of the specific plans and then they add color on top of it. So here's an example of one that uses texture. This is the Danish brocade blouse. So that black line drawing and with all of the different texture sort of drawn on there. And then some charts that have those textured patterns and which plan you would use and how you would add these stitch patterns to it. So this is really a great book for people who want to knit sweaters, but based on their own gauge and then sort of just have sort of a jumping off point to get started so they know 
how to construct the different parts based on their stitch and row gauge. Now the final thing before we get to all of the knitting is our monthly sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Yarnable. They are our giveaway sponsor this month. So we're going to talk about Yarnable here and talk about the giveaway at the end. So Yarnable is a subscription box. I'm subscribed. I really like it. It's nice to get that yarn in the mail every month and then decide what I'm going to do with it. I usually am the type who doesn't buy yarn until I have a project in mind, then I get the yarn. But I like getting this skein of yarn in the mail and then I can just, you know, have fun doing whatever I want with it. And every month is different. Like you've got variegated yarns and speckled yarns and just it's so much fun and all of the little extras that come with it as well. And there are four options, actually eight when you think about it. First you can choose your yarn weight. You can have either fingering weight yarn or DK weight yarn. Both are a blend of, I think it's 8515 Superwash Merino and Nylon, so DK or fingering. And then for each of those you can choose like the single skein of yarn package, which is one 100 gram skein of yarn. I think it's 437 yards in a skein. Or you can do the next package is the 100 gram skein of yarn plus a coordinating color a 50 gram skein. Or you can do the two skeins of yarn, so two full 100 gram skeins of yarn in your DK or your fingering. Or the deluxe package, which is going to be our giveaway this month, is the two 100 gram skeins of DK or fingering plus a 50 gram skein as well, plus all the goodies along with that. So um, I love that you can actually get a peek ahead if you want to on their website. You can like go see what the color for the month is going to be. So I like to be surprised, but I do like to peek and see what's coming up but I'll put a link for Yarnable down below and there is a discount code. If you want to subscribe, you can get $5 off your first box. You'll find all of that information down below. And of course, at the end of this video, we're going to be giving away a deluxe package. So stick around for that. I like to start off my monthly roundup by doing sort of a recap. So this first little bit is something that I recorded after I recorded last month's podcast to show you what I was going to work on for this month. And then we can see how much I actually accomplished. And I had things on my list I wanted to get done, did not get them done. I think three of my projects I'm either like sort of behind schedule, not anybody's schedule, but sort of my own, like just milestones to reach certain points in a pattern. So three of my projects, I didn't hit those goals, but we're going to watch that quick little recap and then we'll get right into what's off my needle. So here is all of my knitting just sort of tossed all together. This is what I'd like to do over the next month. First of all, continue working on this scarf. There's my marker right there. I've finished my 50 rows for this uh, month, but I wanna do my next 50 rows. So I'm gonna move my marker up so I can see my progress. So I finished chart three and I'm ready to start the fourth chart and get half of that finished in the month of July. That's the goal for that. Now this hat I have barely touched since I messed it up and ripped it out and restarted. Um, I've done some, I'm getting there. I think I need to do about 70 rounds all together for like the length that I want for the hat. Then I can switch colors and start in the other direction. But my plan with this is probably to take it with me. I'm going on a family visit to go visit some family in Maine and I'll have lots of travel time and I just want something easy to take so this might be the project I take it's just going to be knitting until I'm ready to do the the shaping for the other side of the hat so that's probably the plan for that is to finish this on that trip hopefully fingers crossed and then back here you can see there's a bit I just steamed it so I'm laying it flat to let it hang out there that's a lace tank that I'm designing for biscot yarns I've got to, I'd like to have that done and in the mail before I leave for my trip so the plan is to get that all knit and sent off in the mail we shall see about that um, it's not due till August so I've got time in case I don't get it done but it'd be nice to get it out the door before that deadline of course and before I go on my trip and then my Felix cardigan I have pretty much I think finished the raglan shaping I need to block it and try it on to make sure it's fitting okay but it's such a bulky yarn it shouldn't take long to do so I think my plan for July is probably to like get everything separated and at least finish the body I might not get to the sleeves because I've got other things I want to work on too but at least get the body finished I think that'll be the plan for this coming month and then my garter stitch hat this is another one that's very simple it's just I mean got to pay attention and do my short rows but um, I'm about almost halfway through 
So I think I can probably get this done this month as well. So I'll get two hats off my needles. So maybe I think the plan will be to finish this hat. And then this shawl is, it's not a big shawl, it's just one skein, uh, but it's not, not simple. The cables in this are difficult. I have to keep referring to the chart and the abbreviations to remember how to do each one. There's a lot going on with this cable here. So hmm, maybe my plan will just be to maybe to finish halfway, just to get to the halfway point for this edging. I think that's a good goal for that, because I'm not sure, I have to really be in a thinking about my knitting mood to do this, because I've messed it up multiple times already, because the, the cable crossings are um, not simple ones. So that's what I've got on my needles right now. I'm not sure, I've got some yarn like for other projects. I might cast on something new depending on what I get finished, but, and I've got a new crochet project I'd like to start, I think, but this is the plan right now is at least to work on these things that I currently have on my needles. So the first thing off my needles, and it's all not even here, I've already mailed it off to Biscott Yarns, is a design that I did for them, this Summer Lace Tank. So this uses their Biscott Yarns Super Sock. The color is Claire de Lune, and this is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. So this tank is just knit in two pieces. You knit the front and the back separately. There's some armhole shaping, there's some neckline shaping, and otherwise it's just lace. And it's not a very difficult lace pattern, fairly simple, um, just increases and decreases. And you just knit lace, you leave some stitches at the sides because you're going to seam the two pieces together at the shoulder straps and along the sides. And probably the most difficult part and it puts it this sort of in the intermediate category is that you have to maintain the lace as you're shaping the armhole and the neckline. And um, so you're gonna like pay attention to each of the repeats and see how much of it you can fit in there and still do all of the shaping for the armhole and the neckline. And I mean, there is a chart for the lace, but I have not sort of charted out every single size with all that armhole shaping and neckline shaping. That would be a lot of charts. So this falls more in the intermediate category because you have to figure out how many stitches you can sort of fit of that lace along the edges and still maintain the pattern as much as possible. But other than that, it's not a particularly difficult knit. The bottom is just a bit of reverse stockinette for sort of like a rolled hem. And then the whole thing is just done in this lace, but with like some selvage stitches and stockinette stitch at the side so you can seam the two pieces together. Then the neckline and the armholes are finished just by like picking up stitches and then binding them right off just to sort of give it like a finished edge on those points and to add a little bit of structure because it is a, a um, superwash sock yarn which can be a little bit slippery so because it has seams at the shoulders and the sides and then actually picking up the stitches can sort of anchor like the armhole and the neckline edging as well I could have sort of maybe like done a slip stitch edge and left them open but it would um, it was very droopy and open so actually picking up stitches and then just binding them off right away just sort of like closes things up and adds a little more structure to those areas as well so I'm not sure when this will be coming out I don't expect it'll be out until next year but I will let you know when that happens but it is not a beginner friendly pattern because I just you know tell you to bind off so many stitches for the underarm and maintain the lace I'm not telling you exactly how to work each row of that lace depending on the size that would be one massive pattern if I had to write that all out and chart that all out so we've left it up to the knitter to figure out how to maintain the lace it's not impossible it's not actually that hard but not super friendly for beginners it's somebody who's done a few sweaters knows how to do like armhole shaping and neckline shaping at the same time and also maintain a stitch pattern in there but that will be coming out probably I would think next summer the next thing off my needles is this shawl the Dunedin Dunedin, not sure how to pronounce that, Chalette, and I'm actually ahead of schedule on this one. My plan was to have like the cable here half done, but I just kept going. Like this was really an enjoyable knit, but once, because <laughs> there's, there's a lot of cables and it was hard to keep track of which way they were supposed to go and which crossings and like you're doing some knit stitches over pearls and then some knits over knits and then some knits in one way, pearl, and then knit in the other direction and just lots and elongated stitches as well. So 
I messed up a lot. I got confused and I had to keep like, I use Knit Companion on my phone and I just go row by row. The chart, usually I follow charts for patterns when there is one, but this one I actually found the written instructions to be easier. But even then I'd have to look at the written instructions and then go to the uh, abbreviations page because I couldn't remember how to do the cable crossing that was abbreviated. But I um, printed out just the page with all the abbreviations, kept that with the pattern. So when I would sit down to knit, I could have Knit Companion open with like the instructions row by row. But then when it would refer to a certain cable abbreviation, I could just grab that page and read it instead of having to flip through it on my phone, which was getting very tedious. And that really helped. And it just sort of made the process fly by. So my plan was just to have like the border finished halfway and then finish the border next month and then the rest but I did the whole thing it's all done it's all blocked just a little shawlette um, but really enjoyable knit if you want something that's gonna stretch you a little bit <laughs> I was definitely stretched with this but just I love all of the little details in here as well that this part the garter stitch is done with like sections of short rows um, so you start at one tip and you knit just the cable part with the edging at the same time. So from here to here, sort of. Um, and then when that's done, you, you have stitches that are, there's some provisional cast on, there's some other things going on in here as well. And then you work the garter stitch portion of the body. You pick up stitches and you work that. And um, there is another version for a larger shawl but I had just the one skein. So this uses Yarnable, one of the, let me see, was it May? No, April, Life is Short, Eat the Donut. So it uses the May subscription color, which is just this lovely sort of cream color with some fun speckles in there. And it's a really nice yarn for this shawl. Um, I think it highlighted this really well. Just very, very pleased with this pattern and I would like to do another Lucy Haig pattern. I would not call these easy patterns at all. I would say these are definitely more intermediate to advanced just because all of the, it's not simple cables. I mean, there are some simple two over two, but there's a lot of more interesting cables in there. And then like taking one stitch, turning it into five and then taking five stitches and turning it into one to get some of these um, shapes within the cable. So uh, definitely worth trying, but if you're gonna do this one, I would, and you like to have, use like Knit Companion to keep track of where you are in the pattern, print out that list of abbreviations because you're gonna have to refer to that every single time <laughs> you come to one of those cables. Did get easier after a while. Some of them I just remembered right away, um, but others I had to like refer to every single time because I couldn't remember which was which, like right and left and the twists and anyway, but definitely pleased with the pattern and would like to do some more of her patterns in the future. Now I actually finished something I wanted to finish, the Get Garter Beret that is all done. I just sat down yesterday and did the a provisional uh, put the provisional stitches back on a needle and grafted the ends together so there is no sort of bind off if I look I can see where the graft is because it's to me it's kind of obvious that my my tension wasn't perfect right there but this still needs to get washed and it's a bit puffy on top so I want to block it out but the hat it's done and it does fit like I've got a clip in my hair so I can't really put it on right now but it fits it looks really cute it's nice and bright so I think that'll be nice in the winter when it's really cold and gray pop up on something that's really nice and bright so this was a really interesting knit um, you knit it sideways so the garter stitch is going in this direction and you've got short rows to create each of sort of the section that sections there's six sections to create the hat and then um, there are two options there's a three needle bind off and a graft and I chose to do the graft to make it as invisible as possible and really pleased with how it came out. I like the striping effect with this uh, variegated yarn. So this is the Yarnable. This is the May 2024 Berry Citrus Bliss. Um, lots of Yarnable this month. So really great for a hat. And um, I'm gonna be teaching a class on using variegated yarn. So I'm gonna save this, I think, as part of like the demonstration. I've got some yarn left over, so I'm gonna knit up a swatch to show like what the colors are like if you just do plain stockinette. But I really like how the combination of short rows and garter stitch and the play you get with the, the colors and how they sort of meld together. So 
really pleased with that. I have one more thing off my needles. This, well, I still have to sew it up, but this is gonna be another cowl. The ends will be sewn together like that. And there is your cowl shape. And I really like color work cowls like this. I just find them really fun to knit. Um, 16 inch circular knitting needle and you just knit this tube and the ends don't even really have to be woven in. You just kind of tuck them inside when you sew up the edges and then tuck those and like push them inside with your tapestry needle after. And then you've got like this lovely squishy cowl. <laughs> so I'm really happy with the colors in this. So this is Chroma Worsted Weight. I have a pattern available that is in Chroma Fingering Weight that uses a skein of white yarn and then a uh, gradient of blues. I think the color is called Cousteau. So this one uses a skein of black paired with a skein of Lava Party, which is a really fun gradient. I really like how this one came out. So I did a more geometric design with this one. So I just have to sew this up, get the pattern written up. That'll be coming out in the fall. And I'm going to be hosting a knit along for these two patterns where we're just gonna, you know, do some live streams and chat about knitting together. Um, and you'll have your choice of either the fingering weight or the worsted weight cowl to knit. Um, so I wanna get that pattern out before that, but that will be coming in November. So the first thing that is still on my needles is the Twilight Realm scarf. This is gonna be on my needles probably, uh, hopefully I will be showing you the finished object in November's podcast. I started this last Christmas and it is taking me a while. And I am technically sort of behind schedule. I had been planning to do uh, 50 rows of a chart, so that's 100 rows of knitting every month. And so far this month, um, but I, I still have a few days left in the month, so if I really work at it, I might be able to finish this before the end of the month, my 50 rows. I, I think I'm at about 40 rows of the chart. So that means I still have 20 more rows of knitting, 10 rows of the chart, 20 rows of knitting to uh, catch up basically. But I figure I can roll that over into next month's, which is finished chart number four, the other half of the chart. And that leaves me one more chart to work on in September and October. So I'm technically behind schedule. I didn't reach my goal of 50 rows. Not that big a deal. It's summer break and I, my plan is to just do a lot of knitting <laughs> and you know, some day trips with my family, um, got some time off. So, um, I'll be working on this and some other projects as well, some new things I'd like to work on. But last month I showed you uh, a big mistake. Well, I, not huge, but even when I held it up for my daughter, she could point it out right away. And it was right in this area. And I, at the time, had knit way past it, so I was not gonna rip it all out. I did not wanna try to drop down and fix a stitch in double knitting. Can do that, like maybe if it's a row or two below, it's okay, but really far down, not gonna happen. It just wouldn't look very good by the time I tried to pick it back up again. And for some reason, did not cross my mind to even think about duplicate stitch. So thank you to, I don't know how many, five, 10 people who mentioned, why not try duplicate stitch? Let me say I just had a duh moment because I'm like, why didn't I just think of that myself? I don't know. I was just gonna leave the mistake and not do anything with it. And then so many people are like, well, try duplicate stitch. And I don't know why that didn't even cross my mind. It's not like, I know how to do duplicate stitch. I've used it before, I had to do it for the master's program, but for some reason, did not even cross my mind to try that. So for all of you who mentioned that, thank you so much. I sat down with this and along with that mistake, which I, I still know where it is because it's not exactly perfect, but right there, like it's still there like slightly, but it looks a whole lot better. I did duplicate stitch over it and this spot especially um, because I had messed up both sides so I had to do duplicate stitch on both sides so I've got like a double layer of fabric there well quadruple layer because it is double layered already and I had to like stitch over both sides I've got extra yarn there so duplicate stitch on double knitting is definitely possible you just have to I mean you have to pay attention because you don't want to poke it through the other side of the scarf so you have to like make sure it stays in between but definitely possible it's kind of like just weaving in the ends which is really easy as well you sort of just poke them inside and pull them out somewhere else and snip them and then like pull it apart so all that yarn tails are inside 
but so I sat down that one mis really obvious mistake I fixed that and then I just sort of I didn't compare it to the chart but I just like laid it flat and just looked to see if there were any more obvious mistakes when I was looking at it and I found a few others so I used duplicate stitch to fix those as well so thank you thank you for mentioning duplicate stitch let me just say I felt kind of dumb because it hadn't even crossed my mind I was just going to leave the mistake don't worry about it but now I know that you can do duplicate stitch with double knitting you just like sort of have to pay attention and sort of slide your needle in between the layers because you don't want to poke it through to the other side obviously but um really pleased thank you so much <laughs> so the yarn for this is knit picks it's comfy fingering which is a blend of cotton and acrylic something that's easy to care for it's nice and soft it's working really well for this um no complaints i just need to keep plugging away and get this done this is like a year-long project and it's a long i my daughter i want to say tried it on but i mean you don't really try on a scarf but like this is the bit like the center point right here so she put that on her neck and the other half goes almost to her ankle <laughs> so this is a long scarf and she is i don't know five four five five so she is um average height and that it's just it's a long scarf but we are closing in on the end. I'm on chart number four, closing in on the halfway point, and then I'll have one more chart to do after that. So if I can keep up with my goal of about 50 rows, that's the goal every month, then I should have it done by the end of October so I can, you know, get the final ends woven in. I did weave in all my ends up to this point as well, just to have that done since I was doing the duplicate stitch anyway and had my tapestry needle out. So I will just have to finish weaving in the final ends and give it a wash. I might sit down and try to like my edges are improved definitely um, but some of the earlier ones are quite messy so maybe try to fix those before I wash it to see if I can like encourage that to look a little bit better but coming along behind schedule a little bit but hopefully I can make that up in the next month I'm also behind on my next project the Musselberg hat I think I said in um, my plans for the month that I wanted to have this done because I would have lots of time to knit while I was traveling and I didn't knit that much while I was traveling I did a little bit on the way home and when we were driving home and that was it so I did not do as much as I wanted and I haven't really wanted to work on this when I'm at home I like things that take a little more brain power than plain stockinette but it is vacation time and we do have a couple of day trips planned so maybe I can like take this on those trips and knock that out this month. That's the plan is to get it done. So that goal was not achieved but I have reached the halfway point. I've started with the second color so I'm doing a two color hat. So like the crown here and then 70 rounds I figure is about right to like for my big head. I'm just using it as a guide. I probably won't keep it for myself. I'll probably I don't know see if my daughter wants it or I keep like a bin of gifts and I might put it in there we'll see or in our just our winter outdoorsy stuff but I'm on this second collar so I'm going to do 70 rounds and then do the crown shaping and then I'll have that big tube all done and finished so the plan is to have it done by the end of the month but who knows if I'll actually do that because it's plain stockinette and I'm just not in the mood for that right now I want something a little more interesting but for travel I like it for travel so we'll see so this is using hypnotic yarns uh, a sock yarn fingering weight uh, plush sock 8515 superwash merino and nylon the colors are wildflower that's this one I think and then amethyst shadow you can see that right there and this is the rest of the wildflower colorway so it's sort of like a creamy base with some speckly beiges in there and shades of purple and then the amethyst shadow has more deeper shades of purple but they're similar enough that I think they look really nice together so um, not much else to say about it it's just a hat stocking it not much going on there working on a cardigan as well and again I had plans to have the body finished by the end of this month and then I just have the sleeves and the edging to do have not finished the body I'm closing in I think I've got like maybe an inch and a half and then the hem to finish up so it's almost done but yeah I didn't meet my goals for some of these this month is it the end of the world no not at all but um, just means I've got more to do next month so it's not much to look at right now 
this is you can see it on the needles down there so that's how it's looking I am probably gonna knit like another inch and then I'm gonna put it on some barbacord and then wash it just to check the length and make sure that's all good and then I can like measure to see where I want the sleeves to land and how much to do for um, the hem at the bottom but the pattern super super simple easy to follow that's the Felix cardigan it uses uh, like a lace yarn over pattern for your raglan shaping and as sort of like a detail along that line as well and the rest is just plain stockinette stitch so I got a kind of some boring stuff going on the yarn I'm using is bulky weight this is so it is going pretty quickly grab a skein here using a wonder fluff the color is cosmopolitan so this is a blend of 70% baby alpaca 23% nylon and 77% merino so it's really soft but I was knitting yesterday in the backyard and it's quite warm because it is summer and it was a little much sitting on my lap all this fluff like this and alpaca is very warm so this will be nice in the winter but knitting on it in the summer not so nice but I do have some plans I was going to record some videos like um, what I do to pick up stitches at the underarm and how to adjust sleeve length that's a really common one my arms are short compared to like my torso and stuff in the rest of my body so that's something I always have to adjust when I'm knitting a pattern is I have to adjust the sleeve length sometimes that's easy to do but sometimes it's not so I thought I would make a video on how to do that basically like if you want to change like the length of the sleeve and you have to adjust the shaping rate because you maybe you want to spread it out if you have to make them longer or you have to like fit it into a shorter area because you have to make your sleeves shorter so we're gonna walk through that whole process as well then I might do a tutorial on like picking up for a button band we'll see but I figure that would be maybe in the fall we'll have a whole month of like cardigan knitting tips and things for that like picking up your stitches adjusting your sleeve length button bands I don't know we'll see but I thought I would do that as well so that's the plan for this month is to finish the sweater let's see if we can do that we'll see I mean I'm almost done with the body and then it's just the sleeves and because it's bulky yarn it is actually pretty quick just haven't worked on it much because it's a lot of weight and warmth <laughs> alpaca is warm and it's a little warm to be working on this right now but I do want to have it ready for fall I guess and um, get those tutorial videos ready as well for the YouTube channel and also some more for uh, the the course that I teach on knitting top-down raglans and yokes and making them fit really well so I want to put like a little bonus section on cardigans in there so that's why I'm knitting this cardigan so that is everything that's currently on my needles it's not actually much just the sweater the scarf and that hat so I need something new because it's a lot of stockinette between the, between the sweater and uh, the hat just the double knitting to do in that scarf so I wanted some new things it's vacation time coming up very shortly at least vacation from doing YouTube videos and some I'm gonna be doing a little bit behind the scenes but I'm gonna take some time off and just hang out with my family um, so I was thinking of some new projects um, I want to dye some yarn I have a shawl pattern picked out I'm gonna dye yarn for that but I'll save that for next month probably to show you that and then um, looking through my little bit of a stash I don't have a big stash but I do have some yarnival yarn so this is last month's yarn uh, June's I'm a sucker for you these shades of green with this pop of like magenta in there um, so I was trying to figure out what to do with this one and I had opened it up because I wanted to get an idea of what was going on here with these colors and it's a lot of like that pale minty green for the background and then you've got these bursts of these greens these darker greens in there as well and then those pops of pink so I wanted to do some sort of a pooling pattern because of these sections of that dark green I thought that could be interesting so I found the geode pattern and it does call for like a specific type of yarn where it's like all one color except for like one spot in that contrast color and that's where you do your pooling but I was thinking it might work with this because when you look at it here you can see where those pools of that dark green is there's two big ones right there white right there and right there well a couple of them so <laughs> so I'm hopeful I'm gonna give it a try and see if this pattern 
will work. It's just a cowl pattern and it's done in two stitch patterns. You've got like your background which is a basic rib four by four, two by two, I can't remember now from just looking at the pictures. I haven't purchased the pattern yet. And then with that um, color that's highlighted in that variegated yarn, it is I think linen stitch. And it just produces, like the whole point is to get that color to pool and use that textured pattern so it looks sort of like a geode. I really, I really like the idea of this. Like the whole point is to get that color to pool all in one place and use a different texture for that stitch pattern. So I thought that would be, I'm gonna give it a try. So this yarn is not exactly what is recommended, but I think that it might work. And I can add that to my variegated yarn class that I'll be teaching when I, t I can talk about how you actually want to use the pooling to get the colors um, to pool. Like a lot of the time you don't want the colors to pool together, but sometimes you might. So I have one more project I wanted to add to my to-do list. Everything else so far is on the simple side. The double knitting is probably the hardest thing and that's not hard at this point. I've been working on it since last Christmas and my tension's improved. Um, it's easier to do. I don't think I'm much faster than I was when I started, maybe a little bit, but it looks a lot better. I've been doing so much of it that it's really improved my technique of working the double knitting. But, um, it's still, it's not that hard anymore. Like it's, I mean, it's a lot of work still and I have to pay attention to the chart, but it's at the place now where I can sort of listen to TV and watch TV and work on this at the same time. Um, and my other projects are all pretty simple. The cowl isn't even that gonna be that difficult besides the planned pooling part. It's just rib and some linen stitch. So I wanted something that's a little bit more effort. So I found the Scout Shawl. I forgot to write down the designer's name, but I will put it here on the screen and I'll have all the details in the video description box. So this is a color work shawl. It uses stranded knitting, but it's done flat. I've never done stranded knitting flat. Um, I use a color in each hand and I can knit that way just fine. I don't purl that way very easily. So this is gonna be some effort to do this pattern. And it also uses intarsia, which it's not that hard either, but I love how it looks like a patchwork. I just think it's so pretty. So for yarn, I'm gonna be using Knit Picks palette. And I love, she recommends like how to choose your color. It's like you're gonna have a neutral. So I've got white for that. And then you're pairing two other colors. So you'd have a dark and a light of each of those. So this is what I'm going with. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking it's kind of like, you know, Joker from Batman, the purple and green like that. So I've got the two shades of purple, two shades of green, and then I've got white here as well. And this is like the colors that will be in that scout shawl. So I'm hoping to cast that on over this little August break as well. And that'll be something that's a little more work <laughs> than some of these other easier things. So color wise, we have white and then the greens are macaw and pistachio and the purples are hyacinth and majestic. So, I mean, I'll have all the details down below, but those are the colors that I chose, I wanted something a little different and I think pairing purple and green is kind of an interesting choice. So we'll see how that works up. I think that might work well with like sort of a patchwork kind of look in this shawl. Got a few acquisitions to show. The first is kind of an interesting one. Um, this tub right here, this is called the Struck It Tub. I got this from Knit Picks. So it's just a big white tub. It's got this little drain right here, so you can drain the water out of it, but it's for washing and blocking your knits. What's really cool about this is inside the tub is this part. So you can, you put, you know, your water in here and it's in this bin. And then when you want to drain it, you pull this out and it sits on, I think on both sides it can sort of, it sits like that on top of it. So it's out of the water and you can, drain your knits. Sometimes if they're especially like this one I have in here I need to get washed is um, a cardigan I wear all winter long. It's bulky, it's big, it's like tunic length. So when I want to dry it, um, it's important to sort of like gather all of the sweater up as much as possible and not let it hang because it's wool and wool will stretch out when it's wet. You have to be careful with it. So something like this where it holds the whole sweater but I can drain it out, I can like sort of squash some of the water out and then it's got that little nozzle on the bottom so I can um, drain it right into my sink or whatever. But I 
I mean, I was just using, I don't know, just like some, a little kitchen plastic basin to wash my knits and my hand knits in when I wasn't doing them in the washing machine. So this is really nice though. It's a step up from that. I like this two basket system so it can sit right up out of the water. I can squish the water out of it and I can, you know, just grab this and take it to wherever I'm going to lay it out to dry without having to like bun hold the bundle of wet wool and it can all be sort of sitting in this basket even after you know you can squeeze out all the water and you can just use this to carry it around so very pleased with this i'm going to be making a few little videos for nitpicks showing how i use it but um just a really nice size this has got a big bulky sweater in here plus it's got a shawl that i need to get blocked this one i showed you last month a cherry berry wrap that's in here too because i need to get that washed and blocked but really happy with this and well I haven't really tried it out yet but I'm, I'm happy with like the the shape of it and how like the two the two bin system sort of so you can drain your project without having to hold like arms full armfuls of wet wool <laughs> so the struck it tub from Nipix. so we have our giveaway to do and while we do that I want to show you this month's Yarnable subscription so you can get an idea of what you're going to get for your giveaway prize. So this one it is um, Oh My Stars is the theme because it is the July box so it's all about Independence Day. So this one came with um, this pretty little stitch marker. And then some try on cables. So barber cord or whatever you want to call it, uh, some sections of cord like that in here in red and blue because we've got that theme going on for Independence Day. So some cords in a nice little tin and then also some pop rocks, <laughs> popping candy. I have not had this stuff since I was a little kid and um, I'm not sure my daughter has ever had this. So I think we'll be give she'll be giving that a try for sure. So very cute stitch marker. I always love barber cord, so that is nice to have. And of course, our yarn. So I get the fingering weight yarn subscription. So this is plush sock 8515 superwash merino and nylon. Um, in this really lovely, let's pull it right out and look, speckly color. So a white base, and then we've got, of course, our shades of red and blue all speckles on there not it's not really variegated yarn it's a speckled yarn no idea what to do with this one yet so that's the fun part for me is like um, I actually made like a Ravelry favorites list of like one and two skein projects that would work you know for a yarn subscription box so I'll probably pop on over there and see if I find something that strikes my fancy so you get all of these speckles shades of blue shades of red and where they've been overlapped it creates like this darker color here which is really interesting so speckled yarn i'm not sure what to do with you just yet so that might be another thing that i work on this summer is a project for this so let's just get right to our subscription box giveaway you're going to get a yarnable deluxe package not the July this is July's you're going to get August I don't even I haven't peaked I don't even know what's in August yet um, but you're going to get the deluxe package so two skeins of yarn like <laughs> this one I need to hang put it back in its skein um, 200 gram skeins plus a coordinating 50 gram not a mini skein 50 gram is like half a skein so a lot of yarn 250 grams of yarn all together two in the whatever the color of the month is plus another 50 grams in um, a coordinating color and then all of the goodies whatever goodies are coming with that and it also all the goodies always come in like a little zipper pouch the yarn comes in a little cloth bag it's just put together so nicely it's really really lovely so whoever wins this month is going to get two skeins of yarn plus the 50 gram skein, plus all the extras of so the deluxe package. And you get to pick whether you want the fingering weight or the decay weight. 
So whoever wins gets to tell me which one they want and I'll send your information over to Cheryl at Yarnable and she will mail your package out to you. So this giveaway is open worldwide. She'll ship anywhere so everybody can enter this giveaway. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to enter the giveaway, you just have to answer a question down in the comments below. So our question this month is, have you ever used a yarn subscription box? Have you ever bought one for yourself? Have you ever received one as a gift? Just answer that question in a comment down below. And on Tuesday, uh, July 30th, I will um, go through the comments. I'll put them in a random comment generator and it will pick a comment where you have to answer that question. And I will leave a reply right on YouTube to your comment telling you to get in touch with me. I'll try to remember to put the email address there. If I don't, it is an, on the about page for the Nerdy, Nerdy Knitting channel. So you just have to email me um, and then we can work out. I need to get your mailing address and whether you want the DK weight or the fingering weight sock yarn. Um, send that information over to Cheryl and she'll get your package out to you. Now when I leave that comment you have 48 hours to get back to me and if I don't hear from you within 48 hours then I will have to choose a different person to win the giveaway. So make sure you pay attention, make sure you have your notifications turned on. It's very often that I tell someone they won and I never hear from them so I have to choose somebody else and it happens more often than you think so make sure your notifications are turned on now fine print this is open worldwide Cheryl's going to ship it anywhere in the world so anybody can enter this uh, YouTube is not sponsoring this giveaway in any shape or form uh, Yarnable is sponsoring this they're providing the giveaway this month and you'll find all of the other terms and conditions and all of those things down in the video description box and one final note if you're in a country where outside of the US, then you might have to pay customs or duties or taxes depending on your location and the cost of the package. But um, we are not responsible for that. If you win this and you end up having to pay customs or duties or taxes, then that is your responsibility to pay that. So if you'd like a chance to win this giveaway prize, be sure to leave your comment telling me if you have used a subscription box, if you've purchased one, or if someone has given you one as a gift, or even if you haven't, just leave that in a comment down below. And on July 30th, next Tuesday, I will be selecting a winner. And that is it for this episode. If you're new here, I will put a playlist of this past year, this past season of the podcast. And if you've been around a while and you're all caught up, then I will just let YouTube recommend a video. And that will be it for me until the end of August when we'll be back with our next podcast episode. So we'll come, you'll have to come back and see what I've been working on and what I finished over my little summer break. And I will see you in the next video.